we are back. We've had a little camera problems, but uh, I think we're we're on camera two. So hopefully this will uh, we can get get on with this project. And in the meantime, uh, Jose's done a little housekeeping work. So we were uh, when we last left you we were talking about the sleeve piping, although technically it's not a piping because it doesn't have any um, right. cord in it or rope. Um, it did not originally, so that's why we decided to do it this way. So you have prepared all of the pieces. Yes. And that's how it looks. You are going to need 14 inches by one inch, fold it in half, press, and then what you would do, you would do a top stitch at an eighth of an inch, 10 inches per, uh, 10 uh, stitches per inch. Mm -hmm. And this is what it will look like, okay? And then what you do next, is, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to trim it a little bit. Now, this been folded, that gives you half an inch. Right. Okay, so. So it's gonna be a little, actually a little less when it, You're cutting off about an eighth of an inch, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm making it to be finished an eighth, about an eighth of an inch, a little, okay. just slightly bigger, okay? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna so, just warn you that yeah. of, of this whole project, this is the most fiddly part because we've got to, we want these, the, the reveal to be very... Um, and you are going to begin mesh. From the um, side seam, you are going to place this, the raw sides towards the raw side of the uh, sleeve opening, like so. You are going so, to leave. So this like, is the armhole of the sleeve. Half an inch past the um, side seam. Okay. Okay. This, to, this would be under the under the sleeve. So if the, when the arm goes down, the sleeve goes down. This is where that hit hits, right? Yeah, so uh, you need seven inches per each armhole, okay? So that gives you plenty of um, uh, trim, I say. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have a little overlap. Yeah. And then you can fold, trim, or cut. This is an, a, a, a fabulous um, technique that can be used in lots and lots of um, doll costumes and historic costuming. Okay, so you leave uh, like half an inch or a quarter of an inch um, past the um, side seam. I'm not gonna pin this last end and I'm gonna show you what to do. So what you do here now, you wanna do it by hand. Uh, on the machine you could do it, but uh, it's, um, tricky and it'll give you a hard time because it's very, uh, the space of the armhole is too narrow, okay? So you begin right at the um, side seam and what you will do. You were starting to show us. Yes, um, basting it. And what you will do, it's, um, you will do the stitches below the um, uh, machine stitching, okay? Oh, you mean above the, you mean above the, below, the, I would, well, above or below, uh, not on it, on either no, side, but, it but should be, it should be above it. Okay, let's call yeah. it above it. Um, the way it's looking here, that's the way you should be looking on yours too. Okay. Okay. And this is the most fiddly part of this whole costume, in my opinion. And why am I doing this like so? The uh, basting on the side of the uh, machine stitching is because you don't want the uh, stitches, the machine stitches shown on the top. Right, when it okay? flips. When it flips, that's why.
and this is going to be the same uh, dimension for the uh, the the uh, smaller version too. So. Okay, I'm getting close to the uh, where I began uh, basting, so I'm going to bring the, that up like so, and I'm going to overlap my end of this um, trim. So it's a little form of a miter. Yes. Good idea. I would not have done it that way. Okay, I knotted that out and I'm going to clip the leftovers, okay? So, what you would do, trim along the um, uh, arm opening, like so. Okay. Okay. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Should we proceed to attaching sure, the sleeve? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Do we have to check that, or? No, not at this point. Um, not, at this point. Okay. not at this point, but um, I can show them. Yeah, it's looking good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to thread my needle. Give me three days and I'll be back. <laughs> I haven't gotten Jose yet to, to he, he has the, he's afraid of my evil um, um, threading machine, which is fantastic. But the thing about the threading machine is once, once the needles have become elderly, it doesn't work. So you have to really use new needles and he's emotionally attached to his needles. So he has to use, do it the old fashioned way. There's no way I can change that. No, you, you can't change that. <laughs> okay, so, okay, again, the side seam, okay? And I'm going to bring the seam of the sleeve to match the side, the side seam. seam, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold that in place. I'm going to flip this around. Okay, here we go. I got my, um, the seam of the sleeve. Uh, matching. Matching the uh, side seam of the uh, dress. Going to pin that. So here we go again. All right. So let's carry on with these sleeves. Okay, I have pinned the sleeve to the armhole. Okay, what I'm going to do now. Okay, I have my basting stitches down here. That's what I'm going to follow, okay? And that again, we did earlier. Yes. And all those extra stitches we... They're not going to show in any way because this is also going to be, the armhole is also going to be bound with silk. Won't create any bulk, um, but it just have a very luxurious. See, I'm making tiny stitches here. Of course, I'm attaching the sleeve to the armhole, okay, so. Do a little tiny running stitch. I'm using a size 11 straw needle and uh, it goes through very easily since we have the uh, silk file very sturdy. Yeah, and you've got a nice sharp, yes. sharp, isn't it? Sharp, yes. And you need sharp with a, a file. All right, we'll let you finish that and we'll come back and see the, see the results. While Jose's sewing, in, uh, sewing the uh, sleeves in, I thought I'd come up and see what Leo's doing, and Leo is uh, working on the small version, but he has his own uh, technique that he does for cutting out because he he certainly knows how to do factory work. So he uses the he uses a pen and he marks out all the fabric before he cuts it. So. 
and of course we don't have to worry about the, the lines because everything is going to be bound with the silk. So he's doing this while we're we're doing the, the, the class. I just wanted you to see what he's up to. And there's a lot of pieces for this for this project. So you could certainly do this at home. But I would, I would, I would only do this if it was something that you're experienced at doing. So we're back. We've uh, had a couple of interruptions today, but we're back and things are looking good. So let's see what how the sleeves turned out. So we've got our inners, and you can see. Oops, let me get the camera. This is a new camera from about five minutes ago, so I'm learning as I go. So we've got that. Okay, it looks good. Now let's see the, 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 the outside. All right, that's looking really good. That looks really good. And I wanna see your technique. That's perfect because it doesn't make bulk under the arms, does it? Well, that's how they used to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, overlapping the, um, the ends. Yeah. So that's what you get. That's a good one. Yeah. So remember that, people. And then let's see how they match up because that's where it gets really fussy and so i think i think that's a very good um it's a very good matchup and um we may take it looks like the the um this side here we may do just a tiny little um um stitch to kind of keep it forward in case it wants to bounce back oh well it won't, it won't bounce back. It's um, yep. it, it'll st it stays in place. Yeah, when, once once it gets you know. used to where it is. Yeah. All right. So we're we're there. we're we're doing good. So the next stage, we probably should. Um, okay. Find the neck opening, don't you think? Yes, but before we do that, we need to adjust the back because we probably need to do a, um, a fold like um, a quarter of an inch or I'm going to put it on the doll and, and, and I'm gonna see how much do I need to fold on the back, okay. okay? And you will do the same on your doll. Yeah, whichever, whatever size doll that you're gonna work with, it's the same concept. Lillian's like, who's this strange man dressing me? Oh, no, Darling, I've known you for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you've dressed her a time or two. Okay, so now what we want to do with the, the back is we, we want it to be very tight. Very tight. We actually want the edge to edge just barely touch. Okay. So that so when we lace it, we've... I'm probably going so there's, to... So there's no diagram on your pattern for this. This you have to do on your doll. And maybe we should do it without the stand on, because that stand is a, is a Okay, let me pest. take it off, and I'll do it. And okay. then we'll put it on her again. If you let me undress you, miss. Okay. You can just be quiet, you know? <laughs> now I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm watching you. Okay, this is about, let's see, how much did I do on my doll? Half an inch, okay? Okay, but you have, this has to be adjusted. This may, they, this may get adjusted three or four times before it's just right. 
So don't just go by a base set at half an inch because you might have a doll that's, you know, chubbier Respective. or skinnier yeah. or um, because the fit is everything on this costume. I know I'm boring. We're boring, Annabelle. Hear that? I think we might need a little... A little more, huh? A, a loosen it up. I think the waist is good. It's maybe at the top that we need to give her a little more space. You think so? By the time we do the um, tie, you know, it's the lace, lacing. Yeah. the lacing. Well, that uh, looks pretty good. I think that should be good. Okay. Yeah, and this doesn't matter how wide this is. Uh, see well, how it no, opens no, it on an edge shape? No, no, no. It, the it lacing should. will will help you with that. It's got to close up the yeah. whole the whole thing. That whole thing has to from top to bottom. So what do we think? Do we think that the bottom is okay? Bottom is okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it does have to lace from top to bottom. The problem with Lillian is she is she's 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 gifted in the rear area more than I thought. Not all dolls are, are gifted like that. <laughs> Some of them are as flat as a pancake. Oh yes, she's she's now now she's not speaking to me. That look, look at that look. That look is like, oh that. Now you've gone too far. She'll block me. Now I'm <laughs> gonna fix this a little bit. The um, um, interfacing kind of bulks uh, uh, there a little bit, and I'm just going to make it a little flatter. And this is a really important part of this, the fit. So you really need to take your time. And then, then not quite yet, but eventually we're going to do... Um, See how nicely lays, very yeah. flat. We're going to be doing um, a top stitching right on the very edge. And then we're going to do the buttonhole lace up. Okay, I'm gonna proceed now with uh, stitching this. Okay, and both both sides, and then we'll try it on again before we before we um, do the drastic things. And then when you go into the um, other side, you're going to you're going to just catch the lining, correct? Um, what side? The other side? No, this right here. You're yes. Gonna, yeah, you're just going to catch the lining, right? That's how I. Yeah, do. I'm catching the lining all, all around. Now there was no boning in the original dress. Because by the time you do all these seams and have them bound and fold over and whatnot, you basically have a kind of a soft boning already in the dress. But there are some miniature dresses that do have boning in, in them. This dress has um, um, drapery weight, um, uh, dress weights in it, but you don't usually see that in a, in a doll costume. So we're gonna let him sew this and we will come come back with you shortly.
So we have the sleeves in. They are looking excellent. Uh, now we're going to um, have a little peek at what we did with the bags. And we don't have it. This is a roughed in lacing. It's obviously not the way it's going to be in the end, but we do it at this point. We have to test it. And I think it's fitting perfectly, don't you? Absolutely. Jose? Yeah. I mean, we haven't pulled it to the tight that, uh, that it's going to be, but I think it's, it's really, really good. And again, people, this is something that there's not, there's no fold on your pattern piece. You have to fit it to your doll, just like you would if you were going to Paris and buying a, a couture dress. Uh, and it is very important that this, that all the way down to the bottom piece, this has to match up because right here is where we're gonna start. This is where the soft bustle would go. Uh, so we're not gonna do that yet uh, because we're gonna work on, um, we're gonna work on the trims on the top, but first we have to bind the neckline. So we're gonna do that next. All right, so we'll get her undone and we'll be right back. So we're back and we are now going to bind the neckline. So what it basically really just is, is we're gonna take the same, um, same silk that we use for the seam, seam binding, and we're just gonna bind the neckline. And this is really, uh, we don't, you know, it, 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 it's not like you have to do it, but it's a very good idea. It does not, if you turn it over, you're gonna make this way too bulky. And this is basically for the finish work from the inside. And then we're going to um, ultimately put trim on top of that. So it's best, it's best to do it this, this technique. So okay. Do that. Yes. Okay, since we have square uh, neckline here, um, attaching the um, binding tape, it's gonna be a little hard, especially here in the, at the corners, okay? So I'm going to do uh, by steps, okay? This will be step one, step two, step three, four, five. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to begin from the inside to the outside. Okay, you're just gonna do little clips. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do clips on the. Uh, no. Um, I mean, I'll show you the next. Little, step. little sections. Uh, by sections, it's five sections what we have here. So. Okay, I'm gonna clip this about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to fold a quarter of an inch. And fold it over. And fold it over nicely. I know it's very tiny. Okay, it's kind of hanging out a little bit, but um, all right, that, that little problem. I didn't expect that bad. This is we what can, we're all doing. We can fix it. Just the tiny stitches there. It's gonna get covered with the trimming, so. Yeah, don't, don't, um, don't overstress this part of the costume. Mm -hmm. 
it's a very tiny space here, so. So we'll go ahead and do this and we will come back and we will show you the results. So we're back, we've got the, the neck all completed and you know, it, it, it's very difficult to do this because, you know, we're not um, do, doing the, um, it's not um, on the bias, but it's just basically to cover our, our neckline. And we're good to go. So now we're gonna go and do the fun part. So we've got a little cutting work to do, which we won't keep you for that, but we'll be back in just a neck, just a, just a second, we'll be back. It'll be, just like on TV, we'll be back. Yeah, more commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make this clear. I don't think we did in the last little segment that uh, what Jose did with the, the neckline pieces, it is he did it in sections. So it's not just one piece. It's several, uh, five separate pieces, and then there's foldovers. And that's really the only way you can do this kind of, with a square neckline, using ribbon to bind it. So I just wanted to clarify that. So, so when you went to do it, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the, the nice results. You see here's, here's the little foldovers right there. All right, so we'll be back. So we're back and now we're at the fun part. Um, kind of fun. Uh, so we're going to do next, create the neck trim and the sleeve trim. So I created my um, version when I was doing the mock-up of, of, uh, of the trim and Jose looked at it and he said, it's very nice, but it's way, way, way too complicated. Let me show you how to do this. So he showed me how to do it and his technique was much, much easier. So explain to them what they're gonna be doing. I only said it will be easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, we have a stripe of the... Um, strip. I, I'm sorry, a strip. <laughs> Excuse my... They'll be looking for a strip. My uh, Freudian thing. Uh, a strip of the uh, pink fabric, which is 26 inches by one and three quarters wide. Okay. So 26, 26 by, one by one and three, three quarters wide. So you'll have to do this in order to make this trim. Yes. Okay. And the next trim that's going to go on top of it, it's um, it's an inch wide by 26 inches again. And that gets folded in half. And then it gets trimmed. Trimmed to the size of almost like a quarter of an inch less uh, one notch. Um, an, um, like 16th. an eighth, mm -hmm. a sixteenth. Yeah. Okay, it's about one eighth. It, it's it's one eighth. Okay, you put that so trim, that's one eighth. It, when you fold it, that gives you half an inch. But when you trim it, that gives you less an eighth. Just Is a, that little, a little, a little, a little okay. less. Okay, and you just go ahead and pin it. And you're going to pin it, and now you're going to sew it. I'm going to, I'm going to sew it an eighth of an inch. So you're, it's folded over. You are now sewing raw edge to raw edge. Yes. Basically, what I'm doing here, see the foot of the. Um, Let me go around. Let me go around if I can get, if I can get past Annabelle. I'm sorry. And you've done this on the bias. This is all on a bias. You have to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, 
Okay, here have here we have the foot of the machine, mm -hmm. and it's basically right to the edge right of the, the edge. Mm -hmm. basically. Okay. So if you're if you are buying the anything the fabrics that we're getting together for you for this, you will you will, you will receive this already pre-cut. Yeah. If you're doing it on your own, you have to follow the statistics that we just gave you. Okay, so next step, we're going to go to the iron. Okay, now we're going to get to the fun part. Start seeing things happening. Oops. Okay, we have it sound like that. So, hold on, just let me get this. This is a new device I'm working with, so I'm learning as I go. Okay. So we folded it over, and there's the fabulous little bit. And I'm sure you learned this just by taking apart all of the destroyed gowns that we've had through the years that had these kinds of trims on it. And don't, don't you think you can really learn a lot just by deconstructing? Yeah. I have learned a lot. Absolutely. And studying the pieces and, you know. And, and this, this they would do in the, the, they would do miles of this. Okay. So, after you've done that, then... One more time. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna fold this. Hang on a minute. Okay. See how it's folded? Don't go all the way to the side to side, okay? Just yeah. slightly, yeah. like an eighth, leave like an eighth, okay? Now for this, is this is a bulky trim and it, it appears on the original as a bulky trim, so um, And it really is the embellishment of the whole ensemble. We might need to miss this a little bit. Yes. Because we're fighting. It's that fabric's fighting back with you. Because we're going to whip stitch it down, I would imagine. Just to... No. No? See, I would just make it Well, smooth. I'm sorry, yes, I, uh, yes, let's uh, stitch it down, uh, but I'm gonna show you. Okay, I'm gonna press it a little, just a little harder on it. I just wanted to get the uh, grease, yes. Okay, so we have this. And one more. And by doing that, that's what you create. But yeah, you have to have a little, you need a little, very, a little thin edge at one. So you ba you basically have the center, and that's what we want, that little edge. Okay. So, I mean, if it, anyone out there, if you're, if you're feeling um, this is hard to do, then take a couple of uh, pieces of cotton, your two colors and just practice. 
But once you get this, this is a great trim. Let's look at that's what it's supposed to look all like. Right, we'll get okay. that. We'll get it all pressed up, and we'll be back. So we're back, and we have the trim is created. It's looking really, really nice. I want to show you the back side. So what you do is you go into that little bit of a ditch right here and you put your little flea bite stitches through and they go through the other side and then they come back up again in that channel. And this is how you make this trim. This was very popular in the uh, six, 1860s, 70s, and even a little bit into the 1880s. But you can see that the cutting it on the bias makes it decorative in, in itself, that nice little stripe. Although it's not that apparent when you're, I'm sorry, this is a new camera, so it's doing funny things. Uh, but it's not that apparent uh, when you're, um, when it's on the garment, it'll just disappear. And so, um, that's really all that's done there and we just have a little bit left to do but i think that this pretty well explains that now we're going to um, put this aside because we want to keep this nice but we wanted to get this little you know uh, fussy bit done before we go on and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to the back treatments We've got all the uh, seams are now bound, and we just have to do uh, a little hem up this, the interfacing, get that ready. And we're gonna leave everything in the inners at this po point um, that needs to be done, which is really of the front piece is just the arm, um, the arm binding. But we're gonna do that last because we, we want to, um, um, we're going to be taking the costume on and off a few few more times, so we're we're good, and then we're going to move on to the next stage. So we've got all of our seams are looking very nice. So now we're going to just overcast the interfacing. And we're just going to use. An overcasting stitch and again if you're not if you don't feel that you're the greatest sewer at this don't don't worry about it because there's gonna be a ruffle that's gonna go right over this so we're gonna just go around this a few a few bits we're actually using antique um, thread because there's such a, a, a shortage of thread these days that we're getting all of our goodies our get, goodies are getting used up today I had a thread company that we placed an order for threads and they called to tell me everything that they didn't have and I, I, I said, do you have any of our order? And the lady said, no. <laughs> not really. Not really. Yeah, she said, not really. Like, oh, that's such great news. We have a good friend of ours that manufactures thread, but, you know, if we buy it from her, we have to buy, buy it by the ton. So you can just see that Jose is doing nice little tiny stitches and doing them perfectly and fast. You just do it automatically. I have to think about each little stitch. Did I get it right? And if the table moves, that's Bixby coming in. So we're gonna, we'll be back, we're, we're uh, and I will tell you that um, we waited too long to do the um, binding of the seams. We should have done that earlier, but we got 
carried away with what other things we wanted to do, but it's better if you, if you do it earlier. Okay, well, we'll be back. So we're back, we've cut out our pieces. Um, because of the size of this project, there's going to be, you're going to have to assemble many of your pattern pieces because they simply will not fit into uh, a printer. So here we are, we've, and it's very easy, like for instance in this piece, which is the, the back, and you put uh, C to C. So this is the um, back bustle piece. And then here is the back bottom inset blue interfacing. So if you looked at both of these pieces without putting them together, they really wouldn't fit anywhere. But once you put them together, and we put these two pieces together, and I did the cutout, and then I left this because I know Jose has his way if he likes to do it, so I'm not gonna argue with him about it. So I just left that that way. So we're using blue tape so you can see it. And so those piece, two pieces are there. It's put on the fold. That goes at the top as an interfacing. And then we have the, you wanna show them the blue that goes on the bottom. And that, that, that goes right there. And of course, we're gonna cut that white paper out. And this, then, this other piece and this right other there. piece, in which uh, it's on a fold. It's on yeah. a fold, so that will be its like so. Piece. So there we go. So we're going to cut this out and we will be back. So we're back. We have um, cut out all our pieces. We're, gonna, we're now, Lillian is looking pretty good. And I'm going to turn this up. Sorry. And just pinned on, but she's looking very nice. Um, good fit. So we're going to now start working on the, the uh, bustle back. Uh, the soft bustle top and the bustle back, and we'll start with the top. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you notice these pattern pieces, ignore these pieces of what it says on them. Don't try to read it because you've, you're, you'll be you'll be using a, a more up to date pattern. Yes. So we've cut our um, lining material and our um, primary material out. So we're ready to do our first thing, which we're going to sew what would be the bottom down first, and then we're gonna do a flip, correct? I'm gonna do uh, encase, encasing. I'm gonna encase, I'm gonna sew like this, like this, All the way and around. like this. Mm -hmm. And leave the and then, top. And leave the top open. Okay. Okay. Which is going to make a very nice clean inner. And it's also going to give this, this is the this is what's going to hold the whole back of the skirt. So we probably should just press that out before we um, do it, because we're not gonna we're not gonna really be able to do it once we once we start. It's not easy for us to get around because there's this is like a bulldog lounge in here. Right Launching over here, right on. There you go. So we're gonna do our ten stitches per inch. Just one there, just to get it just tight. Yeah. We could use a, a motor and a machine 
Going to clip the corners. Clip the corners. Although this is not going to see, even be seen, but it just it'll give you a smoother square. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, by doing that. Here's our little pointer. Your pointer. Jose is going to press that out so it's nice and I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to just look at sh show you other things because if I get up and move and he moves the whole bulldog crew will move and they're all in nice nappy time. I'm just going to go ahead and pin this because this uh, silk file is very sturdy and um, it's yeah. kind of hard to work with it. It's hard to press it sometimes but it's I think it's easy to work with, it's just tough. It's looking good. Okay, let me go, go ahead and press he's this. He's going to press it. I'll show you some, I'll just let you look at other things while he's doing that so we don't get bored. What's happening? There's a new stock of the uh, dressmaker's chart of practical instruction and needlework method. That. That's coming in the boutique. This is a ironing away. Well, that was good. Nobody got up and moved. <laughs> okay, we have this. Looks very nicely good. pressed. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a running stitch. Add an eighth. Yeah, based and stitch. Based and stitch. It can be on the seven, seven inch, uh, seven stitches per inch. Okay. It's not going to show. So this is really at this point. This is we're just doing this to give the garment a little more strength, and it also make a very interest makes it interesting to turn when we put the interface on. clip, trim it a little bit. Okay, we're going to do the interfacing right here at the top. And we have the uh, pale pink um, satin. Satin. Yes. Okay. This is cut on the straight, it's not on the bias. Right side on right side, okay. 
as you can see, you have like an eighth of an inch um, extra on each side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. Okay, that an eighth of an inch that we have extra here, it, uh, you, it gets folded. Let's fold it over and sew it into the seam. And then when we flip it, it's already nicely folded for you. Yep. And uh, same on the other side. Okay. And again, an eighth of an inch. You can do seven, number seven. Every machine has a clip. So these are these are bigger stitches. Yes. This is not having anything to do with stretch. This is going on a decorative feature. Okay, we have an eighth of an inch uh, seam. I'm gonna click my threads here. I'm going to bring this like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and press it, okay? Press like. it, and then we're gonna, we're gonna turn over the raw edge. Just about, just about a, another eighth of an inch. so exhausted today and fussy. She's finally found a place to sleep. Okay, so I press this up and then I press the uh, side an eighth of an inch too, okay? So, now we're gonna flip it. Flip it. Flip it, people. Okay, first of all, we want to see an eighth of an inch. Um, tree, uh, what would you call this, Michael? Uh, um, just a, a reveal. Okay. And I'm going to pin it like so, okay? It's like a big pipe. Really, it's like a big piping, except there's no pipe to it. I think that, that'll be easier for us to work on the back, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this down, and I'm gonna go ahead and pin it again. And then we're gonna sew that, that down. With this it. gets sewn by, by hand. And we're gonna sew it by hand, and we're just gonna, just gonna go in and, and pick, the fire, pick up the, the lining material right? going all the way through. So we'll do that, and we will be back. So we are back, we've done the, the soft bustle top, and now we are doing, which is completely done. Jose has done a lovely job with finishing that up. So now we're going to do the lower half. So we, as you would see on your, your pattern pieces, this, is on, this piece is on the fold.
So we've already got the material cut out, main material and the lining material. And now we're just going to pin it. And this is quite a sewing job, this one. This is, I think, probably the biggest piece of fabric in your kit. Okay, maybe I don't need to pin this right now, sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and encase the two sides. Okay, okay. that's a good so, idea. Let's okay, do it. There's a little treat to that. I'm going to cut just a tiny, tiny bit on this side. Are you saying that my cutting is no. really good? No, no, no. Your cutting <laughs> is good. This is just a trick too. When you flip things around, the uh, lower interfacing is not showing on the right side. Does okay. it make sense? Yes. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just, just, and it can be a little, a little thicker. That's a little sliver that you just took off. Yep. Now they can do that or not do that, but this is a good um, technique you're doing. This does have to look nice on the side because it does it kind show, of show. It does mm -hmm. show as a separate overpiece. See. We are kind of short. Yeah. It's okay. That's what you want. So just bring it together. The raw, um, edge to edge. Edge to edge. Yes. That's. on a uh, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Yes? Yes. Or actually, mm, I don't think it would matter, but I, I'm gonna do an ace, okay? Okay. But no smaller than that. You can do a quarter of an inch or whatever, but you do have a, a decorative point at the end. So maybe just stick to a, an edge. trim this a little bit. And it seems like this one is okay. I'm just going to trim a little bit over here. Now flip this out. On the other side, too. okay. So I'm going to do this. You don't really want the interfacing showing on the on the top of the fabric, okay? No. So that's why I did that little trick to uh, cut off a little bit of. Uh,
Okay. Let's okay. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. Okay, now I'm going to pin this. some of the most selling in this whole ensemble. Let's do this back piece. But we have one more piece to add to it. Looks good. Pinned okay. all nice. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of, um, this is the time you should really take your time with this. I mean, don't go by, don't go by a Kung Fu seller here because you should take your time on this part because you've got a lot of slippery materials that are all, do you think we should, pre we should press that oh, first? Absolutely, press, so, it, press it out and then fold an eighth of an inch here at the top. Right. That's what I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go do, do that. fan pocket on this side. It's really nice. Get a close look at that before we come back and do the... So this is basically what we're doing right now is we're creating these pieces. These three lower box pleats that come out beautifully. All right. So we've gotten that, got that nice pressing line in it. So we'll get this all pinned. There. So we just fold that over. Nice little fold over. And this fabric, all you know, it's beautiful on the back side. But you remember to put your um, front to front. Yes, front to front. Sorry, I forgot to explain that. Um, because this is going to get sewn down and then it's going to do a flip. And the nice thing with Jose's technique that he did on the side, then it's basically just the uh, hand sewing to um, the top of the interfacing and then it's, it's ready. All right, well, we'll sew that down and we will come back. So we almost have the interfacing all sewn down. Take some time. Those are a lot of crenellated areas. And then we get the joy of trimming. We have to trim all this. 
So the snips and trims. your machines you gotta just find your rhythm what works you know that Jose uses quite a bit for this machine he'll he'll work he'll work with it by hand using the using his hand to turn it this just gives you a little extra cotton yeah. Well, you have to do that. You don't want to go past what you need to. That's right. To do. So you just that's the slowest you can do by hand. do is um, suggest to people when they watch you sew that they put their devices on slow motion. that all sewn up. Now we're going to start to do the clipping. You notice he just takes the little tips of the points right off. Just the points, okay? Not, Not any more than that. Gets rid of the bulk and your piece will still have a good sharp point. This decoration is actually very similar to a lot of decorations you see on 1820s and 1830s garments. They'll also, um, that was when really piping started to be used in dress decoration besides just buttonholes for men. So that's really good. Okay. Now he's gonna do little snips. But if he over over overgoes the mark, then we have to go in and sew it again. So be careful. sides. These are thick fabrics, so you really do have to trim, trim them nicely so that you get rid of any of that extra bulk. Okay. Okay, one more.
So we'll get this all trimmed and then we will be back uh, when we restart the turnout. We're about to turn the interfacing, but um, Jose just realized that he has, he didn't clip his corners of his squares, which you have to do that just like the points. So we're back doing that. This is what keeps vacuum cleaning in business. So we're going to start to turn it in. And we're going to be very gentle, not too... And just ease it out. Okay, slide Ooh. on, Michael. I think I, I'm going to have to do some top stitching here. Uh-oh, did we cut too far in? Yeah, I think so. Uh oh yeah. So if you if you did what we don't cry over it, we just go in and fix it. It's never going to be seen by anybody. You know, you know. I'm going to just take four dollars out of your pay for that. Oh my God! I'll be I'll go home with nothing. <laughs> so we fixed that. No problem. First you use your fingers, and then when you get it kind of all roughed out, then you can start using your your, your pointers or, or whatever Jeez, works for one you. One more here. There's one more. Uh oh, eight dollars. You're up to. But we'll fix this, and we will be back with you. So we're back. We've turned out all of the the uh, hem. It's looking really, really good. Um, now all we have to do, can you show them the other side how it looks? Looks very nice. And of course those, uh, those points, those are going to get flipped upside in the design and the center point is going to get flipped up also. So now what we have to do before we get to, uh, the assembly of the back, we're going to, um, close off the top because then we have to put an interface in on that too. So we might as well close that up now. I'm just doing an eighth of an inch. a little trim. It's always a good idea. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and add the interfacing and then we'll do the little trim, okay? Okay. Because yeah. it's basically a little flip, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, right side to right side. So we're going to finish what, what, it, what the public is going to see. So there we go. This is a very complicated design and not easy to figure it all out because when you're trying to follow a historic design, you really want to do what they did. And that is not easy. It would some, sometimes it would just be easier to do our own own creation, don't you agree? Yeah. That's when, when you're really following, and probably whoever did this originally, it was really easy for them because it was their creation. I know there's some people on the internet that have thought this was just a simple little dress, and this is not a simple, this is not a 
It may have simplistic lines, but it is not a simple little dress. That's looking really good. Okay. I think I'm just going to do the fold. So we will be doing that. I'm just going to follow my, um, Kind of like the bread in I Love Lucy, it just keeps coming. Okay. We should have um, ironed that edge, but we can we can do it freehand. So uh, you at home, please iron iron the iron that one edge. It just makes it easier to sew it. We've lengthened this dress in the front and modified it from its original intent. And, um, you know, that could cause the, the back be, to be shorter, but it's really only going to be shorter by half an inch, so it's not worth the effort to add it, add on to the back. And of course, we may not have had to do that at all because um, I finally found a stand that doesn't make Lillian get bunched up. I'm going to so press this. We need to up press this that, way. and then we'll press that. We'll pre now we can press that. That. Um, yep. Let's yeah, see. Okay, absolutely. let's do yeah. that. Well, I don't know if this camera's, but just because we've moved, Annabelle has to be. What's going on? Where are they going? As I said that yesterday, she was in, got took a nap under an aloe vera bush, and and she got the sap on her on her head. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to teach them sewing, not looking at full dogs. So we're going to just do a little hem. Very looks like a little, oh, eighth of an inch or a little less. This is not going to really, don't, don't stress yourself about eighth of an inch or a little, because we really only need a little bit of this showing. Okay. So okay. We have it like so. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this over. 
and I'm going to paint it so and that this this fold here is very important because this is this is your reveal. This is your decorative um, color. I'll just give you an example of what it what it should look is going to look like ultimately. So you want a good eighth of an inch of that color showing. And and people, please try to contain yourself. You don't need to put any more trim on this. It's just, this is a very expensive material, beautiful material. It doesn't need, it doesn't need anything. Just, you know, just the colors are enough. I mean, I'm, I like embellishment and all that too, but sometimes you just want the simple. And that, uh, like so. And then we'll pin all this. And then we're going to stitch all of this down. So we've got quite a bit of hand sewing here to do. So even though you're doing a lot of this by machine, there's still lots to do be, be done by hand. So we'll get this done and then we will come back. Well, we're back and we've gotten all of our items ready. We've got our regular camera back repaired after it uh, died. So we're, we're happy about that. And Jose, you look so much better with this camera. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Buy a dozen, which... <laughs> so they, but the bad news is they don't make this anymore. So. <laughs> So, so we're back and uh, we got a good night's sleep. And as soon as I, I had to just learn the other camera, now I'm on to this, back to what I know. So we're, 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 we've got both of our back pieces prepared. Would you turn them over so that they can see what we've done? So this is, this is how the inner of your pieces should look. And... You know, it's so gorgeous that you could wear it on, really wear it on the outside. But we're not. This is high fashion, so we've got to do uh, what we've got to do. So the next stage is we're going to do the connection to get this look. This is what we have to do. So we're going to connect, and I'm sorry about that noise. Uh, you know, this is a real live working place, so there's comings and goings all the time. So, and then suddenly Bixby needs to have movement. All right, so we're gonna connect the two pieces together. Yes, I center the bottom of the, um, top. the top of the uh, train, okay? So by doing it, by folding it in half, you'll get your center, okay? And by the way, this is not in your pattern. Uh, you have to follow this to get this concept of what we're doing. I'm going to fold, I'm going to fold this in half again and I'm gonna mark my center. Okay, easy to do. Not the pin, doesn't wanna go in. <laughs> yeah, we're having problems with pins here because, <laughs> no, we're having a shortage of pins. We can't get any. So those of you out there that have an abundance of pins, uh, and you no, no longer use them, send them to us. So we'll give them a good home. We're going to make a pleat here about, um, let's see, um, half an inch. It's a fold, okay? Half an inch yeah, fold. Yeah, like a box pleat. Remove and that pin and side. use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do the other side. Of course, of course I shouldn't have removed my, um, uh, center. My, my center mark there uh, and do the same, another half an inch, and that will give you approximately um, one inch and a quarter, one inch and a half, yeah. four, I believe, okay? And there's no wrong way to do this. This is the genesis, and see, that's see. what we want to see, is that beautiful uh, reveal of the pleat. Okay, I'm going to proceed with another fold, the same, half an inch fold. 
You can eyeball it, you can measure it, you can use um, a metal um, roller to um, get the exact um, measurement. But I'm just doing it um, as I go. And another half an inch. I'm going to do the same on this side. This is the center. This one side, one side, okay? Now we're we're, we're um, pinning these down, but they're going to be actually loosey and flip up so that it makes that kind of elegant cascade. Now, okay, we, the question is, is it going to fit no, our space? No, because um, so this one is wider, so I'm going so to have to correct. Yeah, we have to correct. We just loose, we'll loosen out the side ones. Hey, why don't we pin it to each side and then do it? Okay. That would be... Let me just center. I mean, some of these things, people, it's not, we do know what we're doing here, but some of these things we don't, um, we don't teach it we just do it okay so, maybe what we need to do is um, make your center a little less huh? uh, the center can stay the same measurements but we can make the uh, the other two on the side a little smaller Small. yeah by that you don't need to fold in half an inch it will be less than half an inch no, we okay. just want that yeah exactly and then when we pin it to the side we can just adjust it How is that looking? It's looking? I think good. it's looking good. Okay, let me just make the other one. Good, but I'm gonna measure now, and it's almost it's a, there. It's almost, oh. there. it's almost there. Maybe just, a little, just loosen up a little. Maybe I'm going to loosen it from the center. Yeah, just a tiny smidge. Okay. I think that just we got it. it. So, so the the thing here, people, is that you just have to ease this in. There's no there's no pattern directions for this. You just got to ease it in. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is pin it in place. I'm going to sew it on the back. I'm, I'm going to make sure these splits. Excuse me. They stay in place. I'm going to do a few stitches. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is to be exuberant and fluffy. So we're not, we're just gonna do a few stitches just to keep it. Now, I know that a lot of people, a lot of these um, precious fabrics, like the, 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 the satins, the files, people want to press them. And in real, real clothes of the time, this, these box pleats would never be pressed down. They would have been left fluffy. A lot of the, the original Hure gowns in our collection and um, uh, our Worth gowns in our collection, a lot of them have never been pressed. Yeah, so you can- I'm gonna go stick my needle through, mm -hmm. through at the right bottom the and, uh, and right at the, um, the interfacing. Yeah. So, so don't, don't think you have to press these pleats in because then, then they're not going to have the right look. Now, if you want them to have a, the look that it's been in, in a trunk for a hundred years, then feel free to do that. 
that that's not what we're doing here today. I'm doing a couple of stitches here just to secure the bleed in place. Then I go in the back and I secure the back. I'm going the opposite way. The opposite way. So this yes. is not coming out? No, this is on the back. You want to make sure the bleeds get stay in this and get stay in place on the back and on the front. Okay, see? You don't need to break the thread, just come just keep, going. Keep, mm -hmm. keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Okay, I'll do the same with this next um, fold here. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll so, continue this and then we will come back and show you the next step. Okay, so we've gotten all of the uh, box pleats beautifully sewn down. Uh, now we're going to do the next. Oh, I guess we got to do I one. I missed one. You missed one. Yeah. You owe me $2 for that. Jeez. Okay, so now they're all sewn down uh, beautifully, and they've got a, look at the shadow of a, that's just a lovely, lovely reveal. So now here's the inners, and this is exactly how we want it to look. So next step. Next step. Okay, we have the uh, right side of the uh, top of the uh, train, and I have my center mark there, and this is going to be my center. Okay. okay. So I'm going to pin this in place along the um, the uh, pink uh, trim on the back or, or the pink uh, interfacing. Pink, but kind of coral, but it's easier to say pink than coral. But it's it's kind of a coral. Um, now you'd think that this could be done with just one swoop of fabric, but it can't because then you don't get all of these um, different layers and weights. And we're doing this exactly the way that they did on the original dress. Okay. There's Bixby after the mailman. There. All right. Okay. Now we proceed to do the uh, stitching. We're going to stitch this down. So we're just going to do a, a nice little overcast stitch the two pieces together. So we're, we'll we'll do this, and then I'll let, let Jose let you see a few a few stitches. A few stitches at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. That will make it. Yeah, and then. And then you can make um, kind of big stitches. Yeah, bold, yes. Just grabbing the coral fabric. Yes, not, but not going through. Not going through. You don't want those stitches showing on the front. No, we do not. We'd have to take it all apart and redo it. So we'll do that and we will come back and we will show you the next step. We're back and we have gotten that all sewn down. Shall we give them a little a little looky peeky at what we we did on the back. So it's beautifully put together and it will be very um, strong and it has exactly the right look that we want. So the next stage is we're gonna do the top. And I think for that we need our the long. we need Miss Lillian Del Monte and Maybe we should have her off the stand because that... Oh, that, that's good for now. Is it yeah. good? Yeah. Okay. Right. Wanna... So we're going to get that off. So you can see we've, we've roughed in the lacing. Of course, we're going to do that properly, but that's just for the fitting part now. So we've got to pin it in place. Now, the thing about this is about at the end of this piece here, um, that's where the ruffle 
that's going to be revealed starts. And it's starting at about, uh, let's see, on the original, about an inch. So that the ruffle is going to go, the box pleat ruffle is going to go out up about an inch. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we in agreement? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So that's what we're going to do. So what this is the part of real couture where you've got you're fitting it to the client. And uh, so Lillian's waiting for us to do that. Okay. I mark my center here. Again, fold that in half, mark it with a pen, and that's your half, your center. I'm sorry. And we are going to do exactly the same as we did at the bottom here. We're going to make a half an inch split. And this is going to ultimately create our soft bustle. And a soft bustle is a, is a bustle that could be, uh, she could wear this at um, uh, the evening and go to a ball. And then she could also actually sit in a chair. She doesn't have a whole apparatus uh, behind her. And Lillian barely needs a bustle pad anyways. Okay, there's there's our center. There's one center. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just continue on to this side. Because we have to it. bring this in quite a bit because this has to, if you can turn her around um, it has to be this wide. It has to be that wide, and that is not that wide. Uh, let's give you the, the ex let's give them the exact measurements of that. Two this inches. Two inches. With a so probably two and a two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches, um, because the 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 opening is finished. So there's no. So in this case, we could almost do that work to the measuring tape. It's going to be a little uh, wider. Let me just pin this and we'll see if we like that. Yeah, we may have to take some bigger pleats to get all that in there. I mean, I like that. Is it, how's it fitting? I mean, it's, this is not two inches wide, by yeah. the way. It's a little bigger, but... It's bigger. I, uh, we, if, can go, we can go beyond. Yeah. yeah Let's we, see if we, we like it, though. I like it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I, I'm gonna say we'll, we'll use that. So here, here's here's the thing, it, it, should, it should be at least two and a half inches, but if it's a little bigger and you think it's looking great, go with that. We have about three and a half here. So. Oh, well, we need to make it a little smaller. Okay. Because it's, it's gonna, that, that will, that will. Um, okay, don't. Don't get rid of the first one you already made, yeah. okay? So what you do here, that. just make the pleats a little bigger. bigger. Because they're going to be pulled open to, to reveal that, that beautiful color. This is a very artistic dress, so you can take liberties with it. You can make it what you want it to be. And that's what couture is. Each each dress is an individual item. It's not a mass-produced thing. No, I think that's looking good. What's the measurement before we? Okay, the measurement on this one probably three inches. Probably. Yeah. That's three inches. Okay. A little a uh, little less than three inches. Okay, I, I'll accept that. Okay. <laughs> So the next thing we have to sew those in place, don't we? Yes. So we're going to sew them in place using the same technique that you used. With I'm going to go. I'm going to sorry interrupt you. I'm going to start on the back, okay? Yeah. Because this is a little tighter than we have to pull it in.
So uh, uh, basically, Jose's going into the tips of the pleats and he's, he's just sewing them and eventually he'll tie them off and then he will go up through the other side and come back and tie uh, through the, the front side and get to the, little, the edge of the pleat and then he'll take a stitch or two and then come back in the back and tie them off. So we'll, we'll get this done and then we will come back for the next step. So we're back. We've got the piece looking beautiful. I think that looks really wonderful. So next thing we're going to do, and let's show them the inside so they can see how it should look on the inside. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the train. And of course, the uh, center pleat should be your center. Center. Um, center oh, hold on, the... let, me get, let me get this. So that's going to be in the center, as, that as has low to be as this. we can do, mm -hmm. maybe about a quarter of an inch from the edge. We have an inch finish here on the back, and that should be that should right, line right up right with the, the bottom edge. of the mm -hmm. end. Yeah, like so, and that's... Now, the thing about this, I should tell you right now that half of... Uh, that is how she gets into the dress. So that has to be... there. There, there is going to be an opening to that piece. But for now, we're going to pin it, and okay. Um, and now we have to line that up. And so we're lining it up. Let me try. It's kind of hard to pin it. Okay, you maybe might, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it, do it, do it. I'm gonna face you down, lady. Okay. Okay. See this point here? I'm gonna hide that. Okay. Yeah, that little side to, point gets side tucked point. in. Yeah. But just right at the edge of that point. I'm going to make a mark right here because I'm going to stitch it from the back, from the inside of the dress, and that's going to be my mark. I'm okay. going to sew all the way down there from here from here to here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll show you in a minute. Now, uh, by the way, in, in French clothing, it doesn't matter which side. There's no male, female side opening. So if you're right-handed, you can make a right, left, you can make a left, whatever, whatever you like. And we have a, a very spoiled bulldog that's not happy. But I think this this side will be the side that we have we have our opening. There's a little background noise. They're dragging in all these luscious trims. Come, hey Eddie, come back here for a second. Let, let it, just put this right in front of the camera. So here's some luscious trims. Oh, oh and and, the, and these are the new ones. I mean, oh, oh, turn it around again. This one right here is my particular favorite. I just... Well, I'm not putting that one on. You're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, don't. That's favorite? okay. That's well, okay. I don't know. What, I mean, we only have a couple hours, and, okay. and you're, you're delaying it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. The good news for all of you out there watching this, that, 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 that you... Oh, okay. So can you show the side view? That's looking really nice. Now, when we get down, we're going to sew that down. And this, um, there, there, there's a little technique we're going to do to the, this edge here. But we'll sew this down first. And so now I think it's time that we clip um, the threads that, yeah, so we can get, she, so she can get out of this. Rough it in. You know, Lillian, this doll, she's a she's a prima donna. She's used to walking on stage with her dress, you know, practically made five minutes before she goes on stage. So this is not no big deal.
and you can see we got all of the uh, seams are all bound, so they're all looking really nice. We just have the armholes to do, but we're not going to do those till towards the end. Because that is the roughest area for the costume. Okay. Now you pin this really, really good, and now you're going to go and sew it from the inside, correct? Yes, I have this mark right here because that's I'm I'm not going to pass that for now. For okay. Now. okay. Okay. So flip this. And you can see it's really, really easy. We're just going to we're going to attach the front to the lining and then catch a few like up at the top where he's working now we're going to catch some of those um, pleats into it one side is really going to take the bulk of the weight because the other side the other side is going to be hooked in place okay i made about four four stitches um first in first yeah, place to, to hold and the just top. yes the one that nice and tight and then just nice whip stitches here you do nice whip stitches but they can be a little bigger and um, no problem I'm gonna show you from the uh, right side we're going to do another um, another technique another well not technique but another uh, stitching all right so so this is gonna be where we're we're sewing down one whole side and the other side we're gonna leave about probably three and a half inches from the top open so we'll go ahead and do that and when we're done we'll come back and show you the, the, what we're going to do with the other side so we've got the side seams of the train sewn down it's looking really good so now we're going to see what you're going to do on the other side too okay before uh i show you that on either side, you can choose either side to have the opening of the uh, dress, okay? Yeah, so in French, the tour doesn't Right, matter. you mentioned that, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I left from this edge of the back of the dress, of uh, I left an opening of two inches. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Now the question is, can she, can she get her little rear end in there? I think she can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have plenty. all this. We got yeah, plenty of room. Plenty. Sure. Okay, so... I'm going to remove these pins. Okay, so we have this. Like a little flap. Like a little mm -hmm. flap. Are you okay with that? Or yeah, yeah. yeah? Sure. You sure? But I, I think, think it, I needs, can it needs to be tacked down. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be over sewn, but just a little, a little no. tacked Okay, we have the opening there, so we're not going to touch that. Uh, I'm going to begin. See where the opening is, mm -hmm. begins? Then that's what you want to do. Begin from there. Okay, I'm going to put it a little lower. I'm gonna begin from the bottom of the dress. Yeah, so, so you're at the bottom of the, or that would be the top of the inside. Um, and then you're going through basically the, the, the seat, the edge, right to the edge, correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't want the stitches showing either. So a little lower from the edge, just, just make a stitch. Bixby's decided that he's not going to, since just fussing wasn't playing, paying off, he's going to play all by himself. Okay. 
So we're going to do this on both sides. And then we will come back and show you the, the, the technique that we're going to use for, the, for the, the, the bottom edge of the train. So we'll get this sewn and you can see how it, how it works and we'll come back and show you that because it, it is a nice little technique. So we're back and we've gotten that all beautifully sewn down. I have been enjoying the summer fling while Jose is <laughs> sewing that. And so now, we, now we're gonna gather this funny little connection here, but there is a method to the madness. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I think we should show them where we're going with this first of what really needs to have happen with the pieces. Yeah. So we're going to gather this We're going to gather this up. And just kind of make it um, follow this line so right here. So you see, okay. this is very important to get this to look right, is that you have to match up this point with, to that half point right there. So we're gonna pin it, perfect. Okay, that's, that's giving me about an inch and a half from this point up. That's where it needs to be. Yeah. So, what, so do a pin there. Yeah. I'm going to gather from here to here. Right. Okay. So I'm going to stick my needle through the bottom. Grab this. You need double thread for this. Yes. This is a, this is this is some serious. Um, yeah. And since the silk file is very sturdy, you need to. Um, uh, make a couple of stitches here to begin with. Yeah, to, to, to get it nice and secure. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do whip stitches. On the edge. Right. And this is a great way to get a lot of Let me get this out of, out of the way, like so, okay. You need to pull as you go, okay? Fairly small stitches, maybe like uh, every um, an eighth of an inch, probably. Pull it. And you start pulling. Because if you start to pull all of it at one time, you'll, you'll break. The You're not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. The uh, fabric is very, it will not allow you to do that. And this is a technique that was used in the 1820s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. You'll see it on, um, Many, many gowns. Uh, I think a lot of doll customers don't use this technique, but if you've, if you've been playing with some some original things, you, you see this. Okay, that's my last one. I'm gonna stop there. I'm going to compare. And the nice thing is you just keep gathering it up until it fits. Oh my thread just broke. Okay. Yeah, but that's okay. I think you're there though. So so I think it doesn't, you know, you're gonna sew it down so it's a real of course, we're using right now antique thread because we're having a, a thread shortage. But that looks great. Yep, you like that? So now okay. the next thing we're gonna do is sew it in place. Yeah, you don't need to break the thread, just continue on. And this has pulled the, the train into an evenness and is now circular. And this puff, uh, it's creating a puff on the side. This is creating a little, a little floaty dreamlike. Um, and are you using your favorite needle? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are we gonna have to take that needle to a sharpener to have it sharpened for you? No? No. 
There's no such a thing as <laughs> well, you, needle you sharpening know, until uh, it breaks in half, and that's it. Yeah, that was but, the yeah. Uh, uh, we do, you know, there are the pin cushions that will will sharpen that. So maybe we can get you one of those. And then when you're mad at me, you can just sit and stab the uh, pinch you. Yeah, uh, just stab your pin cushion. Because you never get mad at me. You've been giving me bad ideas lately. <laughs> You know, I try to be good. <laughs> okay, do you have? Oh, that looks gorgeous. Looks absolutely gorgeous. And we'll go, in, we'll go through the other side and tie it off once we've kind of made the... But it has to be secured because what if, what if some klutz steps on her, her train? And, you know, it's got to be held in place. So we're, you, um, you have to do this on both sides. So uh, we'll go ahead and finish the other side and then we will be back. So we're back and we've got the train attachment on the side. It's all done up, it's looking great. And we're very happy with that. And that's looking really wonderful. And then uh, Leo has been working on the mini me of Forget Me Not. So he's got his done, the front. And it's looking beautiful and it's fitting gorgeous uh, onto the resin body. So please don't call me and say it doesn't fit because it fits like a glove. So if you've made a mistake, it's your fault. So now he's going to go and he's, he's we're, we're beating him as far as getting this done, but uh, he's now got to go buying the inside. So he's got his ribbon and he's going to do that. So we're going to get back to what we need to do next. So we have shown you that we're, we're at a place where we now have to do some serious work, which is, we're gonna do the ruffle next, correct? Yep. Is, that, yep. is that what you wanna do? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so the ruffle is how many inches of it's material? 86 inches by three. Three. Right. And it's very interesting, um, when I, I figured this all out and I pleated it, and then I unpleated and I pleated it, and then when Jose went to do the prototype, he looked at me with amazement that I got the, uh, the measurement correct. <laughs> so we're gonna do that next, and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Um, just so you know that this, you could, if you wanted to do this hem by hand, you could do it. However, that is not historically correct for this costume. It was originally done with machine sewing, and we had in our collection several worth gowns that had a similar kind of um, um, a, a pleated um, hems uh, also sewn by machine. Machine was in common use at the time. So we're gonna, we're gonna take you upstairs and we're gonna go show you that shortly. So we're back, we have the, we went ahead and done some preparation here of the skirt flops. And it's um, 86 inches, uh, is that right? 86 by three. Yes, 86 by three. Uh, so if you're doing this on your own, you've got to find that fabric. Um, if you're buying our, our set, you're, you will, you will get, you'll get that with it and it will, it will be pre-cut, although you will have to miter it together. So you have pressed over the hem and you've done it, um, that looks like about an eighth of an inch, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. So it's one eighth folded over twice, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's basically a half an inch. Uh, and then you fold it over twice. Yeah. So this fabric has been um, in a roll for about, it's now on a bolt, but it's been in a roll for about Oh, um, almost 70 years. So it, it loves to curl. So we've got to kind of uncurl it.
but it's a beautiful fabric. And we're going to do two things. We're going to do the hem, and we're also going to put in a, um, uh, a uh, tarlatan um, hem at the top. Mm -hmm. And but we're going to do shortly a very quick, quick and, and fast um, basting stitch on the top because it, it'll tend to unravel. Not, and it just gets a little annoying. So we're going to use our machine and we're going to use a um, setting of 10, 10 stitches per inch. And you're going right to the very edge, correct? Yes, I am. And this really should look very beautiful. I can see if you want to just stop for just a second. You've got the little tiny gorgeous stitches and Jose's doing it right on the edge, which is what we want. We want it to look like it was done by a treadle machine in, in, uh, in the so, so, yeah, seventy eighties. I figured in my math, my math that um, the little, the little uh, version of this is going to be. A So we're going to we're going to finish this up, and then we're going to just simply base the top to make it easier for us to do what we need to do, and we'll be back. So the train is attached. Uh, I'm very happy with this, and I know that Jose is happy with this. We want to show you how it looks. We put it on Lillian, pinned it. It's looking really, really good. But here's something that I think is very interesting that you all should um, realize that when you fit this before you get the train on, um, the, the whole ensemble becomes shorter once the train is on and it is pulling the fabric in the right direction. So you really do have to be very careful about what you're length of the costume is but we're we're very happy with this and we're we're preparing some uh, the next step and as soon as we have the next step done we'll be back to show you but it's a good time now to look at these uh, these pleats and how they're going to be decorative these are going to be pulled down and tacked so that there's a little hint of the peach color showing. Uh, I'm showing it to you now because when we put all the streamers and bows and things on it, it sometimes gets, um, it gets lost. But there it is. <laughs> 